again. Right. That's why they had to build the groin because ah. there was no beach there. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. And there's a lot of sand in there now. Mm. <laughs> it was the last time you walked down Greenmount. Oh, there's a lot of sand. Yeah. Jeez, it's a hike, you know. Yeah. Well, even at Corumban now, it, mm. you, you go to Corumban, the amount of sand that's there now because it's all, as it's being yeah. pumped around the Tweed Wall, Right. Um, it's coming north again. And mm. I remember, actually, I remember in the 80s now, because uh, we hung so much, hung around there so much, we'd ride around to Kira, you know, the um, uh, like the Pizza Hut at Kira. Yeah. I remember that there was no sand there for the longest time. And then well, you'd there, see... There was a huge reef out there that we used to spearfish on. Right. And most of that's covered now. You can still see some of the rocks there, but that was a great spearfishing spot. And, and you could just swim out from the beach to it. So that's the argument. They pump all the sand out the And it fills up the reef. The surfers are happy. Fishermen are unhappy. Yeah. You know. But overall, it's better, isn't it? A lot oh, of sand I, I versus a lot so. of rock. Yeah. 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 And, and the... Um, you, you've got to have beaches. Yeah. Beaches are for the masses. Yeah. Right? And, and um, I'm a firm believer that there should be no private ownership... Of, of any accessible areas of land to the beaches. Um, I know there is a lot here, especially in the Palm Beach area, and uh, I shake my head every time I look at it. I, I'm dead against it. There should be no private access to any beach in Australia. Yeah. Because yeah, it always moves anyway, when you think about it. You yeah. know, the, and, the beach and, moves. And? Yeah. Who were the first to scream out, come and help us with money when their backyards were washing away? Yeah. The people living in the prime spots in Australia. Right. I don't agree with it. <laughs> it's a nice bit of street, that. that you know, there's some big, big old houses there, yeah. that Jefferson Lane. Yeah. You know, big yeah. stuff. It'd be I, hard, though, wouldn't it, if you actually lived there? You know, I, I always think, what more? Um, uh, it'd be hard. Yeah. Oh, you know, would you want a whole bunch of, uh, you know, they build that, 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 you know, skateboard track on the sand like they want to do, yeah. you know, the track all the way from. Oh, chew so, through to chew through yeah. the Chugan. Well, they, they should. Yeah, I know they should be. Could you imagine, I always yeah. I think of myself, okay, what would I do? I finally work my entire life with, get enough money to buy a house as great as that at Jefferson Lane at Palm Beach. And then I think, yes, yes, yes. And then all of a sudden it's all skateboarders and people yeah. like, how, Dr- yeah. Personally, what would you do? Yeah, yeah, I yeah but the thing is, Drew, either side of those people, it's it's um, yeah. parkland all the way through. Yeah. So they bought the land knowing full well that that was what it was right. zoned for and they got, actually got it rezoned. Um, not yeah. actually rezoned, they got an undertaking from the council, right. which was totally wrong. Again, I revert back to it. The beaches are for the masses. Yeah. That's that's the only thing that we have free to our public in Australia. Everything else costs you. Yeah. But you can go to the beach with your family, have a great day without it costing you. Did you when was the last time you got a surfboard out? Oh, and I've still got the competition shirt. I surfed in the... Winter Sun Old Mal Classic in 1998, I think it was. All right. Okay. Yeah. And um, I know I must have stood up three times because I fell off three times. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Who are you, do you remember who you were surfing against? A couple of guys oh, you, you knew? Or? I, um, Greg Jones is the fellow that comes to mind. Yeah. Greg's always involved with it. He's yeah. he's one of the top surfers on the Tweed Coast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like us all, he's getting older, okay. you know. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? We, uh, yeah, we, when we have to rely more on memories on it than what yeah. we're able to do. <laughs> but it's a, you know, you, you, you know, the surfers, we're hooked. Yeah. Hooked to punching through those waves and just sitting out in the back there. Well, you I, know, and all the troubles are on, on the land. Yeah, well. And I, behind the waves, it's peaceful yeah. and beautiful. I always lean more towards the body surfing. I... I Loved the body surfing more than I did the surfboards, but I, yep. I did ride. I had a, uh, a, an old male big wave board, um, and uh, 
uh, Barry Bennett board out of Sydney. And um, I used to surf in the big surfs when they were on. Yeah. Um, that was a lot of fun. That's what I remember. In, in the early 80s, my, at my aunt, auntie would put us in the Eden's Tower at, mm-hmm. at Rainbow Bay. We were always there at Eden's Tower. And you could see this great uh, – Snapper Rocks wasn't such a great surfing spot then. It was more Greenmount when yeah. the swell would come in. Yeah, you'd see these then, guys on these huge boards just paddling, you know, and only a few of them too. It yeah. wasn't like – the big super bank that they go on about now with the, no. with the sand, I guess that's done that, right? Well, yeah. Well, it was more like the, everyone went surfing at Greenmount. Yeah. And Kira sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because, when the big surf came, uh, it was like, wow, these guys going nuts. Yeah, well, one, when the big, one, one of the years the big surf was on uh, a fellow called Dennis Yates, whose father owned the Holden dealership, Tweed Motors, him and myself went down one afternoon about four o'clock and we entered the surf halfway between Green Mountain and Cool and Gatter and we swam out and we swam and we swam and we're right out about where they put the shark nets now. Yeah. And we just waited and waited and next thing this huge wave come through. We picked it up and body surfed it. Dennis got it all the way to the beach. On, in Kira Beach. Jeez. Went right through, past the point. There was no groin them days. Yep. And he went past the point all the way to the Kira Beach. There was a sand spit that used to lead up to the Kira uh, Reef. And I didn't get out far enough on the wave and I got buried on that sand spit. Wow. And uh, then I had to struggle from there like every time i came up i got hammered again um till i got to cura beach and dennis was sitting on the beach laughing at me <laughs> <laughs> hey you made me think of something right so that was before the shark nets yeah did you see many sharks yeah because some right, okay. they used to come in in packs wow um oh, that's ha- great they, I, yeah, I, they used to have a oh. guy sitting on green mound headland yeah and there's a bell tower there yep. and they used to ring the bell when the sharks come in and Jeez. that bell would ring sometimes, and it'd ring any time, two or three times a day. Unbelievable, mate! Because I'm I'm the generation that's grown up with shark nets, but I've, I'm, I actually say there's no sharks. I've never seen one. Yeah, so well, they're, they're, I've seen them come in and hunt in packs. Wow, we were we were there one day at Greenmount, and there was two sharks coming around the headland. And at Greenmount, them days, there was a, a deep channel, like from the beach, there was a deep channel, then a sandbar, and then the surf. And everyone used to go through the channel and swim out in the surf, all right? These sharks come in onto the surf line. So the bell went, everyone raced off the sandbar for the channel. And there was four more sharks coming up the channel from the cool and gutter end, swimming up the channel. And the lifesavers had to run in and keep all the people on the sandbar. On the sandbar. And feed them into the headland through the rocks. Incredible. Do you I'll ever, never do you ever remember that. anyone getting, um, you know, nibbled no, or anything? No, I don't. I don't. Right. I can't remember myself of of any shark attack on the Gold Coast. Right. Um, I liken them to dogs. Like you know what I mean? They're they're just an animal like everything else. And but you don't want to mess with some dogs. Like. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, they're just sort of raised wild, you know. Yeah. They obviously, well, obviously don't want to eat us. They just give you a bit of a bite and well, a few packs might go, oh, yeah, you know, and tear well, you up. it's the same. The, the problem you got is you, you make their habitat much more um, conducive for them so their numbers multiply out of proportion. And that's when you'll start to get the attacks on humans. You've got the problem with the crocodiles now already, you know. Um, even our good old kangaroo. In years past, how often did you see kangaroos aggressive? And yet in the last couple of years, we've seen attacks by kangaroos on, on humans. So, you know, yeah. it, it, you, you overpopulate, and that's another problem with the human race, isn't it? Yeah. You overpopulate, you're going to get aggression. Yeah. Um, 
to me, uh, a lot of aggression just um, comes right back to very basic survival instincts. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, right. That's right. Yeah. We're in a lucky place. <laughs> yeah, we are. The, Gold, done, yeah. the, the Gold Coast, mate, it's, it's the greatest place in the world. It is. Travel anywhere you like. Yeah, I you find know? myself going, yeah, yeah, Gold Coast, especially the southern end. But now I, I kind of go, I don't want to tell too many people. <laughs> you know, what I mean? it's genuine <laughs> yeah. because obviously it's kind of like the last of the great places. Well, yeah, look at it. My, my brother and myself used to go hunting mud crabs right. where the Tweed Eds Hospital is now. Okay, that was all all mangrove swamp. Wow. From on on the on the ocean side of the highway through Tweed Heads. Yep. That was a channel, an all mangrove swamp. And look at it today. Yeah. You've got high rise out there. You've got the hospital. You've got the ambulance station. Yep. You've got a big um, nursing home there. Um, all out on that island that was a mangrove swamp. Right. And and uh, me and my brother, we used to go out there of a night with a spotlight, grabbing. We had a big leather glove, and we'd grab these mud crabs. Is that yeah. how you did it? Like yeah. they, oh right, so that's how the Aboriginal people do it too. They, oh, they, they just they get a stick. They, they down spear the hole, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. They, they, oh, some of them. You often see an Aboriginal with a finger missing. Yeah. He's the one that puts his hand down the hole to get him out. Yeah, I saw that recently. <laughs> I think I wanted to ask you that because I I got into uh, recently. I kind of went, oh my god, if all the power shuts down tomorrow, there'll be no deliveries to this the local shops because all the trucks are on power you know like mm. orders we've gone so far away from paperwork you know what i'm yeah. saying oh, yeah. so if the power shuts off for three months tomorrow it'll be madness yeah. you know if you can't fish what else are you going to do right so i freaked out a couple of years ago i thought i need to find out what i can eat around here and i yeah. searched on the internet everywhere and and, and for all <laughs> isn't it funny there's not there's hardly any information really about this area no and but i did find something right yeah have you got any? Can hey? you tell, can, have you got anything? You know, do you know that mat, they call it mat rush? They plant it in the the uh, council parks everywhere, all around Palm oh, Beach. Yeah. Like I'll a show vegetable you one sort of thing. Yeah, well, it tastes like peas. It tastes like yeah. green peas when you eat it. But that was oh, like okay. a, a a staple, like an, an yeah. Aboriginal everyday food. You know, yeah, uh, daffodils. Oh you know yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Just eat a yellow daffodil. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know. um, the um, there's a tea. That yeah. you can buy daffodil tea, right? Yeah. Which is quite tardy, but very nice. Yeah. Well, you can eat this. I, I, I eat real. them all the time now. Yeah. Well, there was someone. Yeah. Some, yeah. Someone said there may be something in it. Look, look at us. All these white people living in this this place, but that's been here for thousands of years. Yeah. Millions. You know what I mean? And for some reason, we aren't eating the actual food that's here. Yeah. But if you do, there's a potential for you to feel better. You know, you're feeling yeah. you're eating things like daffodils. Yeah, right. So every time yeah. I see them now, I pick them up and. Because yeah. one day, what, what are we going to do? What would you do if the power went down tomorrow? I'd probably become a cannibal. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> crazy, That's an easy way out. Yeah. No, but, yeah, no, if the power goes down, yeah, you um, you got to really start. The, the, yeah. bush, the bush turkeys would be in trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wouldn't they? Wouldn't yeah. they? Yeah. yeah. No, I really I wanted to ask you because, you know, you've, you've been around for a while. I, I'm in the Crumman Valley, and there's a little oh, – I don't want to say it, but near my house, there's a little state school yeah. that's been there for 100-plus years. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, they had their 100-year-old celebration yeah. recently, and we went there and we opened their photo book. And in every class photo, there were loads of these Aboriginal kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, and, and all of a sudden, the 90s came. Not, not, there wasn't one Aboriginal kid in the no. photo, right? So – for some reason now, I don't know what to eat around here, like yeah. and how to catch mud crabs without a crab pot. And yeah. uh, I just wish right. I knew. I just wish I knew some some tricks of the trade yeah. around here. No, we, we used to go out with a spotlight and, and uh, of a night you get shallow water and the mud crabs come out and they swim over the over the mud and over the mud banks and that. And uh, and you just race along and grab them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You've got to be that. quick. It's yeah, good fun. I'm going to try that. Yeah, yeah. You can end up um, injured yeah, a little bit because some of them <laughs> buggers have got a nice bite on them. I had a crab pot and uh, um, trying to teach my little boys five. You know, let's go crabbing, yeah. mate. And we found we got 
there were five crabs in my pot, but they were all Jennies. They were all oh, females. Yeah, so yeah. And they were just, just on weight. But no, no, you let them go, of course. Yeah. We